everyone it's been a long time since we have come up with videos and i'm trying my level best to have a fresh start but i'm not over excited because a few months back i tried to uh, start the channel again restart the channel again but i could not follow up so no over excitement let's try and by god's grace i hope everything will be fine from today onwards so as i told in my community post in today's video we will be discussing the elbow complex biomechanics one reason why i often try to restart the channel is because of the large number of comments and messages and requests which i often receive from students all around the world to kindly start the channel um telling that uh, informing me that they don't have much resources so uh, to learn biomechanics uh, kindly cover the rest of the topics in biomechanics it would be really it would be very helpful etc so i can't like uh, what you call i can't um, neglect all those comments and all those requests by students because the basic aim of this channel is to spread education all around the globe so in today's video as i told you we'll be discussing the elbow complex biomechanics This portion in this video we will be looking around the ligaments in the elbow complex so in fact when we are discussing or when we are thinking about the ligaments of any joint it's often a difficult uh, it, it's often something that's not much interesting because you have to uh, memorize some of the some of the names of the ligaments and it's often confusing because we have all the we have many joints in human body so what's the easy method to study the ligaments i often tell it's by relating between the joints and it's by uh, drawing some diagrams of the ligaments and just memorizing or uh, just uh, memorizing or just studying that single diagram instead of studying all the ligaments name by name for example in knee complex you cannot study or uh, you cannot remember all the names of the ligament unless and until you have a diagram in your mind a diagrammatic representation is a better way to a feed or to store things in your mind so in at the end of this video we will try to at the end of this video we will try to study elbow complex biomechanics uh, by um, elbow complex ligaments by a few diagrams so in order to understand what type of ligament a joint has we need to understand what type of joint is it and what type of joint is the elbow complex any yes elbow complex is a hinge joint yes and more specifically a modified hinge joint so to be frank any hinge most of the hinge joints in the human body has two peculiar type of ligaments uh one on the other side of the other either side of the joint one on the one side of the joint and another on the either side of the joint that ligaments are known as the collateral ligaments so elbow complex knee being or elbow joint being a hinge joint has collateral ligaments so that makes it easy so if they ask you what are the ligaments of the elbow complex they have the collateral ligaments now what are the collateral ligaments so elbow if you take it into consideration it has a medial side and a lateral side so in medial side we have medial collateral ligament and in lateral side we have the lateral collateral ligament and the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament and lateral collateral ligament is in fact not one single ligament it's known as a lateral collateral ligament complex because it's made up of three ligaments we'll study about them in uh, a bit later so uh, the first understanding should be elbow joint is hinge joint modified hinge joint it has collateral ligament they are the medial and lateral collateral ligament let's look into the so the medial collateral ligament of the elbow complex is in turn made up of an anterior part a posterior part and a transverse part oh my god it's going to be difficult no just remember it has an anterior part in fact if there is an anterior part definitely there should be a posterior part and then a transverse part so an anterior part an anterior part a posterior part and a transverse part together it can be related to a triangle so medial collateral ligament is having a triangular shape or triangular parts and you can name them accordingly accordingly like an anterior part a posterior part and a transverse part we'll see the diagram to make it clear so in this diagram we can see the ulnar collateral ligament it's often the medial collateral ligament because you know ulna is the medial side bone right yeah. so it is having an anterior part a posterior part 
and a transverse part or an anterior bundle a posterior bundle and a transverse bundle which together make up the elbow medial collateral ligament or the ulnar collateral ligament of the elbow so uh, going into the specific of anterior part or anterior part is also known as anterior bunting so it it is the anterior one okay so let me take a semi flex position of the elbow complex for your reference so this is the medial side this is the ulna this is the humerus so if it is the elbow joint if it is the elbow joint the ligament should pass between humerus and the bone and the bone on the other side of the arm uh, the forearm that is the uh, ulna so medial collateral ligament is located in the medial part so you need to understand where does this ligament runs from where is its origin and incision so this ligament runs from the humerus to the ulna that's not enough so medial epicondyle of the ligament medial epicondyle of the humerus I don't want you to remember the anterior part or anterior lateral part of the lip of the medial epicondyle. Nothing like that. Just remember the medial epicondyle of the ligament. That's more than enough for you to get the marks. So it's from the medial epicondyle of the humerus to the ulna. Where in the ulna? Ulna of focus have a coronoid process and then onycaron process. So it's attached to the coronoid process of the ulna. So just look at this diagram. You can see it's starting from the medial epicondyle of the humerus to the ulna. That is the coronoid process of the ulna so that is the anterior bunting of the medial collateral ligament so what is the function of medial collateral ligament you know this is the valgus force this collateral ligament resists against the valgus force so the anterior collateral ligament is the primary restraint towards the valgus force so that is the most powerful ligament in the or most powerful part in the medial collateral ligament so anterior collateral ligament how do you remember it's the most powerful part or is the most primary restraint because it's anterior it's the first one which we are talking about so it's a first primary restraint so it's a primary restraint against valgus force and Technically, it acts between 20 to 120 degrees of elbow flexion. Why? It may be because when the elbow is in full extension or greater than 120 degree of flexion, the ligament would be slack. So its best acting capacity is between, range is between 20 degree to 120 degree of elbow flexion, 20 degree to 120 degree of elbow flexion. So that's all about the anterior bundle, which runs from the medial epicondyle of the medial epicondyle of the humerus to the coronary process of the ulna and its primary restraint towards the valgus force and acts from 20 to 120 degree and that leaves the posterior bundle to the that leaves us with the posterior bundle where we see the posterior bundle or the posterior path runs from the medial epicondyle so that's easy to the Coronoid and the olecranoid process, both the process, the posterior process is the coronoid process, the olecranoid process, so to the olecranoid process and to the coronoid process of the anna. So it attached to the coronoid process and the olecranoid process, the posterior bundle. And what is the function? It's not the primary restraint, so it is having less role in the what you call valgus force, but still it has a restraint, it has a function in the valgus force, it has a less role in the valgus force, but the main role is the posterior bundle. So, for limits extension, for example, uh, here we have the posterior bundle. Imagine here we have my finger represents the posterior bundle. So, when it's going for extension, this ligament becomes taut and this ligament limits the extension of the elbow, limits the extension of the elbow. And and provides a less significant role in the valgus stability so that's all about the posterior bundle and the transverse bundle which is you know the transverse line how it should be to the base of the triangle which we are discussing so the transverse bundle it's from the if it is a transverse bundle and imagine this is your elbow joint and here you have the radius so yeah here you have the radius and ulna so what happens is that if it should be the transverse bundle it should not come from here if it is coming from the medial epicondyle like this it can should be either under anterior bundle or the posterior bundle if it is the transverse bundle what happens is it attaches between the olecranoid process and the coronoid process between the olecranoid and coronoid process so it's not having 
a significant attachment to the humerus but it's in fact attached to the olecranon and the coronary process the, it may have very significant role in valgus stability because you know it's not attached to the humerus but it helps in the joint approximation mostly a joint approximation is a significant role of a which ligament post the transverse bundle of the anterior sorry ulnar collateral or medial collateral ligaments it is also known as the cooper's ligament so if it is in mcq questions or in y1 they ask which is a cooper's ligament you can tell it is the transverse bundle of the medial collateral ligament of the elbow so that's all about the medial collateral ligament let's summarize the what are the combined functions of mcl so if they ask you mcl you should write what is mcl from what uh, what are the three parts of the mcl and each of the part and each of the function and finally you can summarize the combined function of the lbi or the total function of the mcl which is the valgus stability it limits the it provides a valgus stability or limits the valgus force it limits the extension of elbow at the end of the elbow range as i told you earlier posterior bundle and gates the motion throughout the elbow so you know that ligaments are the one that controls the motion and gives and uh, gives a play for the motion so it gates the elbow motion throughout and provides a restraint to longitudinal distraction force of the joint surface that is the joint approximation as we see from the transverse ligament provide a restraint to the longitudinal transverse force that is a, tra a transverse force a traction force or a distraction force that act longitudinally they provide the restraint because it attaches like this so that's a combined function of the elbow complex uh, medial collateral ligament we cannot isolate all of this function to one or either ligament but each of the ligaments has less role in valgus stability some part has more role in valgus stability and together it is the medial collateral ligament or the ulnar collateral ligament and remember this should be a triangular shaped ligament more or less triangular shaped ligaments for your understanding having an anterior bundle and posterior bundle and a base which is known as the transverse bundle for your understanding moving on to the lateral collateral ligament the lateral collateral ligament of the elbow is in fact made up of it's actually known as a lateral collateral ligament complex why is it known as complex because the if the medial collateral ligament is made up of three parts this is in fact made up of three different ligaments so remember it's three different ligaments they are the lateral ulnar collateral ligaments lateral radial collateral ligament and an annular ligament oh again ulnar it's because it's more or less related to the medial side or ulnar side that's why it's known as ulnar collateral ligament or have attachment to the ulna and if it is having attachment to the radius it is known as lateral radial collateral ligament and annular ligament you know the annular ligament which we will discuss a bit later so it's in the lateral aspect of the elbow complex which we are going to discuss in the lateral aspect of the elbow complex so if it is attaching from humerus to the radius we can call it a lateral radial collateral ligament if it is from humerus to ulna it is known as the ulnar side it is known as the what do you call a lateral ulnar collateral ligament am i right of course let's see on uh, more on to that so the lateral radial collateral ligament is the fan shaped ligament uh, if you look at this diagram you can see it's it's spread it more or like like a fan uh, it's a narrow base a narrow origin and finally fans out like this a uh, fans out like this that's why it's known as a fan shaped ligament it is from the lateral epicondyle as i told you because in the lateral side we are speaking about so you can definitely i can close your eyes and write it's from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it is attached to the radius and to the annular ligament so lateral ulnar and radial collateral ligament is related to the annular ligament so it's attached to the lateral bone that is radius and to the annular ligament so that is why it is known as the radial lateral radial collateral ligament let's see what is the function can you just tell me what can be the function of course the varus stability it again provides against the varus force or it provides the varus stability so that's the function reinforcement of humeral uh, radial articulation and the varus stability or provide resistance against the varus stress and provide varus stability 
that is all about the where we are where is force we are talking about so what are the function it's a reinforcement for the humoro radial that is why it is known as radial collateral ligament so humerus and radius it has been attached so it provides a restriction or a reinforcement for the humoro radius articulation and of course provides a varus stability and restriction to longitudinal attraction you know because these ligaments are collateral ligaments so they provide restriction to the longitudinal attraction and uh, it is the primary soft tissue uh, so soft tissue restriction in the lateral collateral ligament complex so in the medial collateral ligament complex the anterior bundle is the primary restriction here the first one which we are talking that is the lateral collateral ligament complex lateral radial collateral ligament that one is the primary restriction so What, which one is the cheap one which one is the cheap one depends upon which we are talking about the first there it was the anterior bundle here it is a lateral collateral ligament lateral radial collateral ligament first so that is the chief question and now the lateral ulnar collateral ligament it you can see from this diagram the lateral ulnar collateral ligament it starts from the lateral epicondyle to the ulna you might think that ulna is in the medial side how is it attached even though ulna is in the medial side giving about any particular process in the ulna but to a side in the ulna so it can be attached to this side of the ulna it can be attached to this side of the ulna in the look at this one so this one second because it's a disarticulated skeleton that's why it's difficult to cast them in a perfect position so if it is like this so the lateral radial collateral ligament will be attached from the lateral epicondyle to the ulna lateral ulnar sorry lateral ulnar collateral ligament lateral radial collateral ligament will be attached from the uh, will be attached from the lateral epicondyle to the radius so like this lateral ulnar collateral ligament will be attached like this as my middle finger shows it is the lateral ulnar collateral ligament this is the lateral radial collateral ligament and of course we have an annular ligament which attaches the head of the radius which we will discuss a bit later so that's our lateral ulnar collateral ligament it act, act from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus to the ulna lateral aspect of the ulna of course you know that lateral aspect of the ulna and it also function to provide varus stability but it's not the chief pri or primary restriction it is the lateral support to the elbow and act as a dynamic stabilizer more than a static stabilizer of the elbow so it's not much important but if you are attending some high level of examinations they might ask you like in the lateral collateral ligament complex which one act as the dynamic stabilizer of course that is the lateral ulnar collateral ligament so it stabilizes the elbow mainly in the dynamic phase of the elbow stabilization so that's the ulnar collateral ligament lateral ulnar collateral ligament and finally the annular ligament which you know attaches the head of the radius it's more more so more or less related to the head and neck of the radius it is from the anterior and posterior margins of the radial notch of ulna its main function encircles the head of the radius like this so it is from the anterior and posterior part of the radial notch of ulna so here is the radial notch where the head of the radius inserts from there it starts and ends over here circling the radius so circling the head of the radius so the movement of the uh, head of the radius is inside this ligament or is with this ligament so it attaches from the anterior and posterior part of the radial notch of the ulna anterior and posterior margins of the this can be described as the, this is the radial notch and this can be described as anterior margin and posterior margin so it arises from the anterior and posterior margins of the uh, head of the radius so its function is the holding the proximal radius against the ulna so that is the main function holding the head of the radius against the ulna or the holding the proximal part proximal part is the near to the body so proximal part holding the proximal part against the ulna and it permits free rotation of the head of the radius because it's inside this one so it can uh, have a free rotation as seen in this diagram the combined function of lateral collateral ligament complex which is our last discussion provides varus stability and stabilizes the head of the radius this providing a stable base of rotation which we saw is one of annular ligament and stabilizes against varus force and supination of the torque supination torque for stabilizing against varus torque is enough 
if you can just write about the supination force also because pronation supination this kind of rotatory force is also being stabilized by the lateral quadrilateral ligament stabilize humeroradial articulation against the longitudinal distraction force and stresses that is one of the important function and then maintains posterolateral rotatory stability it's more or less the same thing even if you don't remember all these seven points you can get the marks because it's more or less a similar one prevents subluxation of humero or a ulnar joint by securing ulnar to the humerus so that is an important function prevents the subluxation of humero ulnar articulation by securing the head of the radius by securing the humerus and ulnar articulation so that is an important function and finally prevents forearm from rotating off the humerus in valgus and supination during flexion from so during flexion from the fully extended position that is so you know that this ligament complex provides the supination force or uh, i mean provides the rotatory force or stabilizes against the rotatory force and the supination so during this supination and rotation movements what happens is that there is a possibility of this joint surface to get off because it's the rotatory movement it's not like the single movements that are happening like flexion or extension so during this high amount of torque what can happen the joint surfaces can sometimes get Uh, dislocated or uh, can move from the position so this lateral collateral ligament complex which is over here provides this sort of force so if you are moving your hands in rotatory movements like this you can see main action takes place in the radial side so that is the side where you have the lateral collateral ligament so if there is a reinforcement like this it can only play in this in this particular position or within this range so it provides stabilization against the rotatory and supination force from a flexed position to a uh, fully extended position to flexion or whatever it is so that is the combined function of lcc and that's all about the ligaments of the elbow complex which in turn is medial collateral ligament lateral collateral ligament medial collateral ligament having three parts lateral collateral ligament having three ligaments in turn i hope that was easy and this video was worth watching like the previous video let me know in the comments and if you like the video don't forget to uh, click the like button and subscribe to our channel and one more request kindly share this video with your friends and groups and with your groups because it's been long time and it will be difficult to come back like with the old momentum so your supports are really important